hi guys welcome back to another video it has been a minute it has been a while there are some new faces here so if you guys are new to my channel hello and welcome thank you so much for being here i am so excited to share another video with you guys and to share what god has been put, been putting on my heart and just to kind of share what i've been thinking about reading about praying about um share a little bit of what's in the word that i want to share with you guys i have my bible here here and I have some really good stuff I want to just talk about today and share. God has been doing some amazing things in my life. He is moving, he is changing hearts, um, he's just turning hearts of stone into hearts of flesh and um, awakening people. I mean there's just so many good stuff that's going on and as you guys can see the title of this video today we're going to be talking about testimonies. Um, what does that mean and why am I talking about testimonies? A lot of you guys are here from my previous testimony that I shared or a video that I shared about me leaving Islam and coming to Jesus. Um, you guys I cannot believe that video um, I cannot believe the comments the emails the just the response I got from it all glory to God that was not my own doing without Christ there is nothing I can do Jesus says in the in the Bible without me there's nothing you can do and without Jesus Christ there's nothing that I can do that video was all glory to God it had nothing to do with me I did not want to post that video I was going through some deep spiritual warfare if you guys know what I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about um, it took me months to come to the strength that was some supernatural strength for me to go ahead and do something like that because I was afraid of the world y'all the world was keeping me Satan was trying to keep my mouth shut um, Satan was trying to keep my mouth shut and it was using people in my life it was using my family members my siblings um, friends people I know people I grew up with people telling me to take down the video and I just can't believe the glory that is coming to the name Jesus you guys so many people have reached out to me from that video who are also Somali and have left Islam and have come to Jesus um, so many other people who have left Islam that have come to Jesus that are non Somali people so many like Posting that video, I was like, I'm the only person. There's absolutely no way that there's somebody else out there who can um, res my story would resonate with. Um, along with all of the non-Muslim um, people, just the Christian people that my story resonated with, which was shocking, but also just all of the Muslim people who also have left Islam and have come to Jesus. There is a revival happening in Muslim communities. People, the veil is finally being lifted. Um, people are seeing the truth for the first time time they're finding a community of other believers that also have the same story the same background as them people think that because you're Muslim like this is who you have to be for the rest of your life that is absolutely not true that is the lie from the enemy you that is not your identity you can become you know a believer in Jesus and when I say believer in Jesus I know a lot of Muslims say well we do believe in Jesus no that is a false Christ that you believe in Isa is not the the, the God <laughs> Jesus Christ those are two different people um, absolutely not the same thing and so that is again deception that is a lie those are not two of the same people one is living and one is dead and does not exist and the one that is dead and that does not exist is named Isa and Jesus Christ is a living God he is the Almighty God and he is living and he is transforming hearts um, so that is a lie from the enemy that is deception and you are not the only person who's out there who who has left this um, cult and I just want to reiterate that because I have gotten a lot of emails I have gotten a lot of messages of people also saying that they did not know that there was somebody else out there who also was Somali who also was Muslim and was raised in Islam and who also left the religion and is now a believer in Jesus Christ so I just want to say there is a revival happening in the Muslim community there's a revival happening in the Somali community and God is after those hearts and those people and the enemy is going to try to stop you from sharing your story and your testimony because of fear of men but we do not hear have fear of men whatsoever there is 
power to your testimony you guys if I did not share my testimony it wouldn't be out there on the internet right now it wouldn't be out there for people to stumble upon and for people to relate to me and for people to be inspired to just say wow like there are other people out there who believe the same thing as me there is power to your testimony and because of my testimony because of my story there are other people my obedience is helping people and the reason why I'm making this video and the reason why I'm like okay there is power to your testimony is that there is there simply is power to our testimony it is and there's plenty of examples in the Bible um, in my life is just one example but there's plenty of examples in the Bible of people sharing their testimony and um, their testimony being used to bring other people to faith and not only bringing other people to, to faith and bringing other people to Jesus I should say their testimony um, shows that there is a true God that there is a living God who transforms people's hearts who transforms people's lives and and changes them and so I wanted to share a story that has been coming um, that has been like on my heart for a while to share and it is the story of the Samaritan woman in um, the book of John so I got my cute Bible here okay book of John let's find it the story about the Samaritan woman so give you guys a little bit background about that story as I am flipping through the pages in the Bible to try to get to that story let's see we're in Psalms so that's the Old Testament Matthew okay um Matthew Mark Luke and John okay we're getting there we're getting there John okay John 7 I believe it is no John 4 okay John 4 okay so a little background on the story about the Samaritan woman so there was a uh, so Jesus was with his disciples they went into town to get food and they were traveling to go to Samaria where Jesus was gonna preach um, the good news and so um, on his way there he stopped at the well uh, Jacob's well and there he met a woman um, who was a Samaritan woman and she was there drawing water from the well Jesus asked her to give him some water um, and she said I can't give you water I'm Samaritan you're a Jew we're not supposed to like basically like we're you know not supposed to do that like how could you ask me for water like you are a Jew and back in those days like Jews did not um, they didn't talk to other people they were like higher than everybody else so anyways um, Jesus tells her like if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is asks you for a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water so Jesus is basically saying that um, you know everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst indeed the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life so then she says I want that water like where can I get that water from um, I really want that water I want um, water that water that living water that you say that you have um, where can I get that water from then Jesus tells her he says he told her go call your husband and come back um, and then the woman replies to him I have have no husband she replied Jesus said to her you are right when you say you have no husband the fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband what you have said is quite true so basically Jesus tells her to go bring her husband she says I don't have a husband I have had five husbands I have no husband and the man that he's that I'm currently with is not my husband so then she's obviously shocked because here she is coming to the well to draw water she runs into Jesus Jesus knows who she is he knows everything everything about her because of course he's God so he knows everything about her and he's telling her like you know all of these things so then she says our ans our ancestors worshiped on this mountain but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem okay uh, John 4 4 21 woman Jesus replied believe me a time is coming when you will worship the father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem you Samaritans worship what you do not know we worship what we do know the salvation is from the Jews yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the father in the spirit and in truth for they are the kind of worshipers the father seeks God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth 
The woman said, I know that the Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. So Jesus is basically telling her that he's the Messiah. He literally confesses right there. He says, then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. So then John 4, 28, then leaving her water, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way towards him. Now let's go down to um, 4, 39. I'm trying to skip through this because there's a lot of, obviously there's a lot to cover here, um, but I want to read the part where, um, where I want to talk about. So where I want to talk about is 4.39. Um, Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his word, many more believed. Uh, many more um, became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. Okay, that's where I want to talk about. That's the part I want to talk about because this story is so powerful and is such a great example of the power of your testimony. Like it is such a great example because here you see a woman, okay, who comes um, comes into contact with Jesus. She has an experience with Jesus Christ, right? Just like you guys watched my testimony and I shared my experience with Jesus Christ and what he's done for me in my life. So here I am and here she is and she has come across Jesus and she has had an experience with him. She goes back to her town and she tells everybody in her town, everybody in her life about the Messiah that is the Christ, right? Uh, the Messiah called Christ. So she goes and she tells them, she says, come and see this man who has told me everything about myself he knows me he knows who i am he knows what i've done he he told me all of these things um so she shares the good news with all of the people in the town of samaria and then jesus comes himself to those people but before that it says many of the samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony okay this is why there is so much power in your testimony and this is why there is so much spiritual warfare in your testimony because your testimony has the power okay it has the power just like it had the power here in samaria many years ago many of the samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony people are believing in jesus because of a testimony okay so why do you think it's so difficult for you to get your testimony out why was it so difficult for me to get my testimony out why was there so much spiritual warfare why were there so many people trying to stop me right there's a mental war that happens first you think like okay there's nothing i can do there's nothing there's no power in my testimony i'm gonna look dumb i'm gonna be embarrassing i'm gonna make people hate me my family's gonna be mad at me because i'm doing something that is like unheard of i'm doing something that is like so scary right like people are gonna want to hate me all of these things you have all of this mental warfare that happens the spiritual warfare that's happening around you and in you um in your mind because you're so afraid of sharing your testimony because of what could happen but what you you lack to think of what you know what I didn't think of or what ultimately I thought of, but you know, in the moment I didn't think of was the power that my testimony has. The fact that I can share the good news with people and I can share what God has done in my life. And that helps other people's faith, that encourages other people, that is, is giving people encouragement and faith that God can move in their life. That because of my testimony that I can save a soul or a life or plant a seed in someone's head because I shared the good news with them and now that they can go and look and experience Jesus on their own because listen these words in, in the Bible they're not just words they're living words they're God's words and God speaks through his word to us in our hearts and that is a powerful okay the enemy doesn't want you to know the power that you have in the name Jesus like I get so passionate and excited talking about this because 
that's what Satan doesn't want you to know. He is the father of lies or something like that. The Bible says that he's the father of lies. He's the father of lies. This world is filled with lies and deceit and deception and we have to discern through all of those lies and deception and islam is a huge one a big one and what keeps people in it is fear is fear it's not logic it's not reason it's not um it's not good written text it's nothing it's nothing do you hear you know muslim people sharing their testimony of what allah did for them in their life no absolutely not you hear people sharing their testimony of what jesus christ did for them because he is living Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He lives, okay? Like he lives in you. If you accept, if you accept Jesus, he lives in you. And, and you worship in spirit. You have the spirit of God in you. God is a spirit. It says right here, it says God is spirit. 424, John 424. It says God is spirit, okay? And his worshipers, you and I, his worshipers, must worship in the spirit and in truth okay in the spirit and in truth okay we must worship in the spirit which is the holy spirit and in truth which is jesus because jesus is truth right truth is jesus so there is power to our testimony and if you guys are watching this video and if there's one thing i can if you've just been debating in the back of your mind right you don't need to have a platform to have a testimony like when i shared my testimony i had like a thousand uh, subscribers okay it doesn't matter i didn't share my testimony because of any other reason other than um the fact that God was was telling me to and I needed to and I'm glad that I did because what God has been doing since I shared my testimony has been unbelievable the people that I've met the people that I've met has just you guys there is more good than bad fear keeps you captive fear keeps you captive and it keeps you from from spreading the good news if you have people in your life that you could share this with whether they're your muslim friends your atheist friends your buddhist friends whatever it is share your testimony share what god has done for you the enemy wants to silence you because there is power in your testimony if we share what god does for us in our lives people will believe it says it in the bible y'all is that right here okay like it says it right here in the bible it says 4 john 4 39 there's so many things that stop us from keep sharing our testimony for me my biggest thing that stopped me from sharing my testimony was my family and friends and what people around me what my worldly friends and family what people in this world thought of me and what they're gonna think of me and that kept me from sharing my testimony for months months that video was not a video I just decided one day hey let me post this video I'm kind of in the mood for it like no like nobody wants to post something and have people say negative things about them and be rude nobody wants that but you do that because you're obedient to God I did that because of my obedience to the Lord the Lord comes first right what's the Ten Commandments the first commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart okay with all your heart me posting my testimony was an obedience for for the Lord it was an obedience for the Lord okay so yeah I lost a lot in that I lost a lot I'm not gonna lie but do ultimately it doesn't matter because what I gained was so much more than what I lost and yeah I you know someone can say you're so brave for doing this and yes I am but not because of my own strength because of the strength of God right God has given me a supernatural strength not to only have a baby in my bathroom, y'all. I don't know if you guys missed my home birth, but I had a baby in my to on my toilet. I had a baby on my toilet. Not me, right? It was the strength of the Lord, right? It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God that lives in us that gives us that strength. So I'm going to be redundant, and I'm going to share one more, okay? So it says, many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. Okay. First, what happened was this woman, the Samaritan woman, went back to Samaria, went back to her people, her town, right? It's like me saying, okay, I'm going to go back to Somalia and share the good news with 
with the Somali people. I share the good news and many become believers because of the testimony that I shared of what God did for me in my life. But because of the word of God, okay, the second part, because, but because of the word of God, okay, and because of his words, many more became believers. So because of Jesus' words, many more became believers, right? We're ultimately not, like, I'm not the one who's turning someone into a believer. Ultimately, that's Jesus Christ, right? I'm just planting seeds. I'm just out here. The Lord is just using me to plant seeds in different places and using me to remind people of the goodness of God. That's all. That's all I am, right? So they said to the woman, okay, this is uh, John 4.42. You guys follow along. Okay, John 4.42. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of you and what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. Like, it's so good. It's so good. Okay. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that the man, that this man really is the savior of the world. There you go. There you go. Okay. Your testimony matters. Okay. Get out of your head. Get out of your head. Get into the word of God. Get into the word of God. Get out of your head. And do not give the enemy a foothold in your mind and in your heart. Do not do that because your testimony has power, okay? Jesus says to his disciples, he says, go out and spread the good news, okay? Go out and spread the good news. And in my name, heal the sick, heal the blind, okay? In his name, heal the sick and heal the blind, okay? That is what God told his disciples. And that is what God said to all of us, right? As followers of Jesus Christ, what is our goal and our mission? Our goal and our mission is to spread the good news, right? And to make disciples of nations and people and, and to go and teach people about the word of God and to share with them what God has done for us. Essentially, God is telling us, hey, I saved you. I did wonderful things in your life, right? Go out and tell people that. And people, that's going to plant a seed for them to want to know, okay, how are you so different? Where do you get the strength from? Where do, how, did you, how did you have like all of this good stuff that's happening in your life? And even when, when good things are not happening in your life, you are, you know, going through the most difficult time of your life. You're losing your family and your friends and the people you've known all your life. How do you have a supernatural strength? How do you have this joy and this peace? And that's because of Jesus. And so it is important for us to share our testimony, especially Muslim people, especially people who ha are leaving that. Because Islam wants you to believe that that's your identity, that there's no way you can leave, that there's no way you, you, you're born a Muslim. No, you might be born a Muslim, but you don't have to stay one. You do not have to stay one. And that's the thing, that's the thing that is so important for God for you to know. And, and, and that is what I want this channel to be about, right? This channel is not just about like me doing homeschooling stuff and vlogging. I want this channel to be more than that. God is using me for more than that. And um, a lot of people might watch this and think this is so cringing. I cannot believe her. Why is she saying these things? And that's fine. That's fine. Like, we're not equally yoked. Like you do not understand because you are thinking of things that are earthly and I am thinking about spiritual things, right? The Bible says, Jesus says that, you know, we're, it says like, it's, you're thinking about things that only your flesh can understand, but the spirit gives knowledge. The spirit gives us understanding. It gives us wisdom. And those are powerful things. And so I want you guys to watch this video and I want you to share your testimony in, in all places, in your workplace, even if you work at McDonald's, share the good news with someone in, in McDonald's, a friend or someone you work with. If you're working at Starbucks, do the same thing. You do not just have to share your story on, on YouTube. You know, if you want to share your story on YouTube, go for it. Do it because there are thousands, thousands of people who will hear it and listen right? This is the beauty about the internet. You can really spread the good news to the ends of the world, to the ends of the world. Like that is just use the tools that you have.
okay? The resources, the people in your life, use them. Because I am here on one side of the planet sharing my testimony, my story, and the Holy Spirit is working on someone's heart in Africa. Like, guys, that is unbelievable. That is just unbelievable. And guess what the enemy wants you to do? The enemy wants you to shut your mouth and not say anything and, and be afraid. I'm not afraid. You know why I'm not afraid? Because I have God by my side. I have a God whose spirit lives inside of me. I have nothing to be afraid of. Nothing. I mean, honestly, I think a lot of people think like, oh yeah, you share your testimony and you know, Muslim people will make you think because it's just a fear-driven faith that, um, you know, something bad's going to happen to me. Nothing bad's going to happen to me. Nothing bad can happen to me. And if something bad happens to me, what's the worst case scenario? I die and I get to be with Jesus in eternity? Come on, y'all. Like, don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of that. Because... We live in a generation where people are hungry for more, are hungry for more. They are thirsting and the water that they're drinking is not quenching their thir thirst because that is not living water. What is living water is the truth, which is Jesus Christ. And let me just say that the enemy wants you to live in fear. And guess what? Sometimes you lose people, but that is okay. Jesus says, if you love your mother or father more than me, you are not worthy of me. Okay, and that is the truth. That is the truth, and that is that is the truth. You are not worthy, right? We have to sacrifice. We have to pick up our cross and sacrifice. Jesus died for our sins so that we may all live in Him, right? And so, you have to think about what that means. You can't hold on to your worldly things and and put those things above God. You can't. You can't. And so for me, yeah, I walked away from my family. And that's a choice I made for the kingdom of God, right? And that is that. So if you guys are watching this video, I just highly encourage that you just find the strength to share the gospel with whoever is in your life, family, friends, um, boyfriends, girlfriends, husband, wives, Muslims, Buddhists, atheists, Catholic, come on, like, like, keep going, like, just keep going, um, share the gospel with everybody, and guys, I really love doing these kinds of videos, I love doing vlogs too, which I will do, I haven't, um, done that, but I love talking about the Bible, I love talking about the word of God, y'all, it is living, I highly encourage you guys, and if you're watching this video, God is putting this video in your life for a reason, or making you stumble upon this for a reason, and I hope that this video encourages you to share your testimony, don't let the enemy win, don't let the enemy win, okay, like, don't, because there are people out there and because of your obedience you can save a life you can plant a seed in someone and you could save their life you could save their eternal life guys it is it is it is it is just we should all look at that and we should all say we're fighting for the kingdom of god and we're winning over souls for jesus like because that's what we're doing right like the enemy is really deceiving people people are living so in so much turmoil with their souls like, their souls are suffering. There's people who have suffering souls. Like, that's a big deal. Like, that's a huge deal. And if you are someone who has a soul that is suffering, I pray that this video brings you to the feet of the cross and you find Jesus. Because that is the only thing that's going to quench your thirst. That is the only thing that's going to satisfy your soul. We can't save people. We can't. Only Jesus can save them. We can pray for them. We can plant seeds in them, but we cannot save them. They have to be willing. They have to have a heart of flesh, not a heart of stone. And only Jesus can help with that. So if you have people in your life, family members in your life that you're trying to force to come to Jesus, don't. I tried that. I tried that. And I said, I can't. I can't help you. Only Christ can help you. And you, we all have free will. We all have free will. We all have a free will to choose. And if you're a Muslim and you're watching this video and you're thinking to yourself, but I was born a Muslim. I can't be, I can't, I can't follow Jesus. I can't believe that Jesus is God because I was told he wasn't. You were lied to. Find the truth. Find the truth. You can find it. You can find the truth. There is a truth. 
There isn't my truth, your truth. There is a truth. A truth. There is a truth out there. And you can find that truth. You just need to stop being so stubborn. Stop being stubborn. Stop thinking that you know what's right. Search for it. Like, literally, just go and read the Bible. Read the Bible. It's just a book. Like, I know that, like, as Muslims, you're just, like, not allowed to touch the Bible. Read it, whatever. Read the Bible. Read the Quran. Like, the Quran. Like, you will find the truth. You will find it. That's the thing. What the enemy uses, God will use for good. Like, I went on this journey to finding and trying to prove that Islam was the religion. That's what I went on this journey trying to do. And I came out of this journey with so many reasons why Islam is satanic. <laughs> like so many reasons, so many reasons. And I share a lot of those on my podcast with my husband, okay? And so I have a podcast, it's called Seeking Truth. And you guys can go and go on our website so our website is called seekingtruthpodcast.com we have a youtube channel down below i will link it down below we have a youtube channel we have um a few different social media pages um you can listen to our podcast on spotify i don't know if we're on apple podcast but i think we might be on apple podcast as well so you could do that so if you guys are made it this far make sure you subscribe to seek in truth make sure you guys um leave a comment down below and i'm just gonna i just pray that you guys find the courage the supernatural strength that you need to share your testimony and i know that you guys are just gonna make a difference in the in the kingdom of god and if you were watching this video i pray that you just find the strength that you need that the holy spirit leads you and that you share your story your testimony and that you do not give a foothold to the enemy and that the enemy you say get behind me satan for it is written okay like mm, okay in the name of jesus so i am so happy you guys um i don't know i just really love i i'm just and I'm, I'm feeling good right now and i am going to end this video here because i'm sure it's going to be extremely long y'all know that i love to talk um but yeah, so I'll see you guys in my next video and I just love you guys all so much. God bless you guys um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.